hopefully this is not too much information for you guys and if it is just feel free to fast forward if you want but I'm a coffee nerd and that's what I'm talking about today so there you go Well, hey guys, Natalie here. Welcome back to Hey, It's a Good Life. I'm so glad you're here because today we have some really fun things in store. I'm gonna show you guys the progress of reviving our lemon tree. I'm also gonna show you guys how I get beautiful, delicious tasting coffee at home for a fraction of the cost of what it would cost me at a coffee shop. And then we're gonna go thrifting. All right, so you guys already know I'm a crazy plant lady and a crazy cat lady. But did you know that I used to be a barista? And then I'm also secretly kind of a coffee snob. So my friend Josh over at The City Said recently came out with a video showing us that he was, once upon a time, a BMX rider. And in light of this, he asked us, what's something that we don't know about you? So I started thinking about this. I didn't really have a good response right off the bat. My response to that question is, I used to be a barista. I'm kind of a coffee snob. So something I wanna show you guys today I even have this very fancy espresso machine at home because I got tired of paying coffee house prices for something that I knew how to make. So I decided to buy my own espresso machine with all of my graduation money from grad school. Quite an expensive purchase, but one that is well paid off for itself because... <laughs> So I decided to use my grad school graduation money to buy this amazing machine. And just a couple days ago, my friend actually bought this machine because she knows how much I love it and what a great machine it is. And she asked me to send her some videos of how to make latte art and how to pull a decent shot. And she asked me to send her some videos on how I get coffee house quality lattes at home. And she said, you should totally add this to your YouTube channel so that I can keep going back and referencing it. And there are probably other people who are interested in this too. And a long time ago, when I was still drinking coffee, a couple of you guys did reach out on Instagram of like, oh, did you make that at home? Like, how did you do that? So if you're interested in that, I'm about to show you how I pull a decent shot of espresso at home, how I make some beautiful latte art, how this is really a beautiful, functional, frugal thing in our home. We have come to enjoy so much. So are you ready to learn how to pull a decent shot? Let's get into it. Okay, so step one to getting a quality cup of coffee at home is making sure that you start with a quality bean. Hopefully what you can see in this bean is that it's not dark and it's not oily. And those are very common problems in poorly roasted beans. I don't wanna throw any companies under the bus, but some of the bigger chains, Parmux, <clears throat> they tend to burn their beans and they are not using super quality beans. So we like to try our best to get organic, fair trade, medium roast beans that have either been freshly roasted or that we know are quality. You wanna start off with a good bean. Okay, next up is your portafilter. And the portafilter goes in the group head. This is the group head where the hot water comes out of and creates a, creates pressure and creates a beautiful crema on the espresso. So we're gonna take our portafilter, get a nice grind in there, and we're gonna talk about the specifics on grind and what you should pay attention to on that. So let's add our ground coffee to the portafilter. So, bless you. So some things to know about the coffee machine that I'm using. I'm using the Breville Barista Express, and it has a built-in hopper. The hopper is where you put the beans. Bless you, the hopper is where you put the beans. This is called our hopper. From the hopper, the beans travel to, bless you, from the hopper, the beans travel to a burr head grinder. Burr, I think it's called a burr head grinder. So they travel through the grinder and create our ground coffee. Now there are options on this. The basics of getting a good shot have to do with humidity and coarseness of the grind. If you're like me and you live closer to the ocean, you're gonna want a coarser grind, most likely, unless it's a really arid day, like today. So let's talk about humidity. Basically, the more humid your area, the coarser the grind you're gonna wanna have. The less humid your area, the finer grind you're gonna wanna have. You don't want something that's too compacted so that the water can't get through, but you also don't want something too loose so that the water flows through so freely. And I'll show you guys what I mean in just a second. So right now, I don't know what the barometer says it is today, but it's a pretty arid day, and I've got our grind set on about four. I probably should lower it just a bit. I think it's on four, so we're gonna put it on three and get a little bit of a finer grind. Okay, so we got our ground coffee, and I wanna show you guys what it looks like. There's some parts that are just particles, and there are some parts that have kind of clumped together. That's how you know you've got a decent grind. 
Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna settle this and then we're going to tamp it. Now as far as tamping it goes, this is called your tamper. It comes with the machine right here. Oops stays right there so that's kind of nice because it's always there you don't have to look somewhere for it when you're using this to tamp your espresso beans down or your coffee beans down you are wanting the same pressure about like squeezing a lemon some lemons I just picked those from our neighbor's yard it's about the same pressure about 40 pounds of pressure so here's my trick for getting a nice even well-pressed coffee puck take two fingers on both sides and make sure that it's evenly distributed across the surface until it's nice and even. I come down with my other arm and I push down evenly across the surface. And you can kind of twist it, blow off any excess. Okay, so I just added our portafilter to the groove head and I'm gonna hit double shot because we're using the dual wall filter on our portafilter, which is what they use in most coffee shops. There's more specifics on all of that. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but I just wanted to let you guys know for any other coffee aficionados, I'm using the dual wall filter. Since I'm using a double shot, I'm going to press the double button. After I press this button, we're gonna watch this little meter and see if I got it in the espresso range. And if it's in the espresso range, well then we know we did a good job. But let's say you have a machine that doesn't have that. What you're looking for is basically the consistency of warm honey. There should be a pause in the beginning as the group head fills with water. Maybe about 10 to 15 seconds after that, you're gonna see it start to pour. And it's gonna be slow at first, and then it's gonna be a honey-ish color and the consistency of honey, and then it's gonna finish off. And then you're gonna have a nice, hopefully thick head of crema on top. And that's where a lot of the flavor comes from, and that's where you're going to balance out any bitterness in the coffee. A good cup of coffee really shouldn't be that bitter, so a good shot of espresso should not be that bitter. so so poor not my best but also not my worst you could see how it kind of sputtered and it didn't get all the way into the middle of the espresso range what we're really looking for is it for it to be in the middle of the espresso range and a nice clean pour throughout the whole thing and that just has to do with dialing in the shot so if I was really really into this today and I wanted to get like the perfect cup of coffee I would keep messing with the coarseness of this grind and with the pressure of my tamping so now it's time for the fun part which is the milk and the milk is so important people really overlook this if you go into a chain coffee house <clears throat> which will go unnamed you might hear them put the milk into the milk pitcher just shove it under the steam wand and you're gonna hear like this horrible sound that is the sound of burning milk what you want to do is introduce the steam to the milk slowly so they can get to know each other and so that you're not burning anything why is this important because a good cup of coffee should naturally taste sweet because you're activating the sugar enzymes you're activating i think it's the lactase that's what you want so let's talk about how you can steam properly you want to look for two things you want to make sure that you've tilted your pitcher so that you're getting a nice whirlpool going and what you're doing with that is you're inserting microfoam into the milk. So the microfoam is what you want to get going in a whirlpool through the whole thing. You wanna keep the steam wand towards the top of the milk for about 10 seconds at the beginning. And you wanna hear it like a sputtering. Like if you put a card in a bicycle and you heard like the that's what it should sound like. So you wanna get a nice sputtering sound for about 10 to 15 seconds. That's what I like. I like a really creamy cup of coffee. Some people like less than that. Um, it's really up to preference, but I usually go for about 10 to 15 seconds with that nice sputtering sound to get my microphone going. And then I'll submerge the one just a little bit into the pitcher, make sure that the microphone is evenly dispersed. How do I know when the milk is done? When you cannot touch it for a second longer. This machine actually has an auto shut off, but it's auto shut off is kind of at a higher temperature than I prefer. So I do it to touch every time. And what you wanna do, and I'll show you this, is you wanna keep your hand on the pitcher, away from the steam wand. Obviously, it's metal, so be careful. You don't wanna conduct heat and burn yourself. You wanna just touch the outside of the pitcher. When you can't touch it for a second, you are done. Okay, so let's see what that looks like in action. Let me show you this before I switch over cups. My husband likes more milk than me, so I'm gonna switch into a bigger cup for him. But before I do, I just wanna show you that really nice, creamy head of crema on this espresso. Espresso, that's what it should look like. <laughs> So it might 
be kind of hard to see, but you know that the milk is quality when it looks like velvet. And what you can do is get some of those bigger air bubbles out. And this is how we do latte art. I'm gonna do my best to show this to you guys, okay? So we're gonna start high, make sure everything is nice and evenly distributed here. We're gonna start high. Bring it closer, get really close. And there we go, there's our espresso latte art. So it's kind of hard to do a tutorial like this and get really awesome latte art because the espresso had kind of cooled down by the time I got to it, but, but it tastes really good. I might pull another shot and do another round just so I can show you what a quality latte art looks like. Okay, so that was my kind of tutorial on the basics of getting a quality cup of coffee at home. Now I'm gonna show you guys some quality latte art. All right, now this is a quality cup of coffee that we got for a fraction of the cost than you would get at a traditional coffee shop, and it tastes like coffee shop coffee. Now I'm gonna indulge in a sip of this, but as you guys know, I still can't really have coffee, so I keep my essential oils like Cheer and Motivate right here, and I put that on instead of having a cup of coffee. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I wish I could have it, but Tommy will enjoy it. Might save it for later, maybe for tomorrow for some iced coffee. As for me, I'm gonna indulge in some oils. If you can't have coffee, at least you can smell good, right? <laughs> also, this is kind of like my little reminder area, and I have left, I've left this deep blue in a little beauty container with some coconut oil as a reminder to make some arthritis balm. Did you guys know that our garden bed project would not be possible without our next door neighbors? They're seriously the sweetest people. They have lent us so many tools and I found out that he has arthritis. So I thought, well, I'll make him some deep blue balm and see how that works out. You guys, he is gaining mobility back in his shoulder from using deep blue in some coconut oil. He's like, yeah, look, I couldn't do this before. Now look what I can do. Like I need that stuff in my life. And I hadn't thought that this would be good for arthritis. I still have so much to learn about oils, but it just gets me really excited and I wanted to share that with you guys. I first poured water into a container. I let the container sit to let the chlorine bubble out and then I added this organic fertilizer with a water pump to get an aerobic process going. fed our lemon tree because it's the morning its pores are actually more open on the leaves and willing and able to receive nutrients directly through their leaves it's a great way to feed a plant quickly but you want to be careful not to do it when it's too hot or too late in the day because you could burn the leaves because it's daytime and because this plant is new to me i didn't go hog wild on the tree i just am testing a tiny section to see how well foliar feeding works on this tree so far our lemon tree is responding really well to this organic fertilizer and i'm excited to see how it turns out so let me show you guys now how many blooms we have on this tree after one round of organic fertilizer How cool is that? In the process of reviving our lemon tree, we're inviting more pollinators to the garden. I think we just witnessed a bee pollinating a couple of our lemon blossoms, which means we're gonna have lemons, which is awesome. I've actually never seen a bee drop pollen before, but I can see like this yellow stuff falling from it. I'm gonna have to ask my friend Kaylee what that's all about. Well guys, I just got back and I did manage to find this really cool 
green army style jacket and this cool like little peasant top thing which I'm really excited about because as you can see the weather is starting to warm up and it is a beautiful day here in San Diego. What I did not find is what I set out to find which were like some pretty summery dresses. Just no luck with that today but that's okay. We'll go thrifting another time. I'm very happy to say I went to Plato's Closet and got 50% off all my stuff. So I got all of this for about 15 bucks. So we've been cleaning up around here. We put a bunch of stuff in this green waste bin. Tommy actually power washed this whole area. So it's a lot more clean. It sadly doesn't look very different, but it feels a lot different. And so that's nice. Every day we're just a little bit closer, which is really, really exciting. So yeah, we've been power washing. So we've been cleaning up around here. We put a bunch of stuff in this green waste bin. Tommy actually power washed this whole area. So it's a lot more clean. It sadly doesn't look very different, but it feels a lot different. And so that's nice. Every day we're just a little bit closer, which is really, really exciting. Be careful not to show you too much out here. We've got some things hiding over there. Um, we're about two thirds of the way through the sanding and staining process. It just takes a really long time. Go figure. But slow and steady wins the race. That's what I'm telling myself at least. So I know it's all gonna pay off very soon. And we might even be hanging up our lights today but we also need to go find a washer. I looked at like how difficult it would be to create a washing machine basically with parts that we had around the house. And I just don't know that I have the physical capacity to do that right now, to like hand wash all of our clothes and towels. I will say I'm looking forward to hang drying them though. As you guys know, I just built that DIY. Um, as you guys know, I just built our clothesline, which is not shown right now because it's detachable. And so I've detached it so it's not like an eyesore in the middle of the day. But anyway, so I am looking forward to washing our clothes again in a washer. Would love to find an even more like off-grid solution, but we just don't have what we need for that right now. And if we did, I just don't think I would have the manpower to make it happen because I'm really putting so much of my energy towards these garden beds. So getting more and more excited to share with you guys the final result of these garden beds. I'm just really eager to have it done and start growing things, so yeah. That's it. Thanks for joining me today, you guys. It's been fun to be with you. I'll see you next time.